When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places, and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. Mark 13 verses 7 to 8. According to the most recent data from both countries, the number of fatalities caused by the earthquakes that struck Turkey and Syria earlier this year has now surpassed 50,000. According to Turkey's Disaster and Emergency Management Authority, FAD, 44,218 people died in Turkey alone as a result of the earthquakes, while Syria's most recent death toll stood at 5,914. A 7.7 magnitude earthquake struck southeast Turkey and northern Syria on February 6, 2023, and a 7.6 magnitude earthquake struck a short while later. Since then, the area has experienced over 9,000 aftershocks, according to the AFAD. Since the beginning of time, people have been affected by the common phenomenon of the Earth's shaking. Prior to the invention of strong motion accelerometers, the magnitude of a seismic event was inferred from the effects that were seen. Magnitude and intensity are calculated in different ways and have no direct relationship. An earthquake's magnitude is a single number that indicates the size of the quake at its epicenter. The intensity of the shaking at various locations surrounding the earthquake is measured. According to the distance from the earthquake and the nature of the underlying rock or soil, intensity values vary from location to location. In the 11 provinces of Turkey affected by the recent earthquake, there are still close to 240,000 rescuers working, including volunteers. Although it was initially challenging to reach some of the affected areas, recovery efforts are still ongoing, and the number of casualties is increasing. There haven't been any recent reports of survivors being saved. The Turkish government reports that 173,000 buildings have so far been recorded as collapsing or being severely damaged, and that nearly 530,000 people have been evacuated from the disaster area in Turkey alone. More than 1.9 million people have sought refuge in hotels and other public facilities as well as temporary shelters. In the 11 provinces of Turkey affected by the earthquake, there are still close to 240,000 rescuers working, including volunteers. Although it was initially challenging to reach some of the affected areas, recovery efforts are still ongoing, and the number of casualties is increasing. The United Nations estimates that 8.8 .8 million people in Syria have been affected by the earthquake, compared to around 20 million people in Turkey. Syria, where many people were already living in precarious conditions as a result of years of civil war, has provided less information. Many survivors have either left the earthquake-damaged regions of southern Turkey or have relocated to tent cities, shipping container homes, or other government-sponsored housing. Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the president of Turkey, has promised to rebuild homes within a year, despite the fact that experts have advised authorities to prioritize safety over expediency. A document that claimed to show a sharp increase in earthquakes in recent years was circulating on the internet not long after the 2004 tsunami that wreaked havoc in Indonesia and nearby nations. This document was used to fuel the belief that Christ would soon return. We have recently witnessed the terrible earthquake in Haiti, which was swiftly followed by another, even stronger earthquake, this time in Chile. The fact that Haiti largely disregarded the advice to build structures that can withstand large earthquakes was directly related to the lessening of damage. Then came rumors that an earthquake measuring 6.0 had struck eastern Turkey. Undoubtedly, people will once more start to use such catastrophes as proof that the end of the world is near. Or, to be more precise, they will argue that we are living in the final days of the last days because the New Testament repeatedly insists that the last days began with the first coming of Christ. With the instrumentation available today, an estimated 500,000 earthquakes are detectable annually. One can detect about 100,000 of these. The United States, California and Alaska, as well as El Salvador, Mexico, Guatemala, Chile, Peru, Indonesia, the Philippines, 
Iran, Pakistan, the Azores and Portugal, Turkey, New Zealand, Greece, Italy, India, Nepal, and Japan, all experience minor earthquakes on a regular basis. The relationship between magnitude and frequency of earthquakes is exponential. For instance, earthquakes of magnitude 4 occur about 10 times more frequently than earthquakes of magnitude 5, on average. For example, it has been calculated that the average recurrences in the United Kingdom with low seismicity are an earthquake of 3.7 to 4.6 every year, an earthquake of 4.7 to 5.5 every 10 years, and an earthquake of 5.6 or larger every 100 years. But hold on. How frequently do we revisit the text of the Bible? Apocalyptic earthquakes bigger than any the world has ever seen are pictured in Revelation occurring during the actual tribulation. But the passage from Jesus' Olivet Discourse is where people look to draw a connection between typical earthquakes and the approaching end of the world. The verses that apply are highlighted in this video. Other human calamities aside from earthquakes are also mentioned. It's important to carefully read the text. The people of God shouldn't be alarmed by wars or war rumors. The conclusion is yet to come. The phrase, but the end is not yet, can be translated from Greek as all up to telos, in the RSV, HCSB, ESV and NKJV versions of the Bible. These omens do not portend the end. Amazing how the Christian grapevine can spread a tradition that is completely at odds with what the Bible actually says, fueled by widely read scare stories. What about quakes and famines, though? Just the beginning of birth pangs, as the saying goes. This statement is asyndetically linked to the one before it. That is, there isn't a Greek conjunction where one would be expected, which tightens the connection between the two statements even more than it would have otherwise. However, in order for the translation to sound natural in English, a conjunction is required. Thus, this is, these are but the beginning of birth pangs or pains. In other words, these various calamities on earth serve to remind believers that Christ will return and put an end to human history as we know it. Just as labor pains remind a pregnant woman that there is a baby in her that the body craves to bring into the world. But my, how erratic those labor pains can be appearing weeks or even months before the actual due date. They serve only to remind us of the fact that the climactic day is drawing nearer, but we already knew that. They prove to be utterly useless for determining when labor will actually begin. The same is true of catastrophes and the parousia. Given all the scriptural prophecies about Christ's second coming being unexpected, happening like a thief in the night, I actually think he'll pick a time when very few individuals have predicted it, and when there isn't much apocalyptic zeal in the air. Bible Verses About Earthquakes Psalm 60 verse 2 You have made the land to quake. You have torn it open. Repair its breaches, for it totters. Luke 21 verse 11 There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and pestilences. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. Mark 13 verse 8 For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. These are but the beginning of the birth pains. Matthew 24 verse 7 For a nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Acts 16 verse 26 And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. Revelation 11 verse 13 And at that hour there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. Seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake, and the rest were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. According to Norse mythology, earthquakes are the result of the god Loki's violent conflict. Loki, the god of mayhem and conflict, was punished by being imprisoned in a cave with a poisonous snake placed over his head that was dripping with venom after killing Balder, the god of beauty and light. When Loki's wife Sijin had to empty the poison from the bull, it fell on his face, causing him to jerk his head away and struggle against his bonds, which shook the ground. 
Poseidon was the god of earthquakes and their cause in Greek mythology. He would strike the ground with a trident when he was angry, bringing about earthquakes and other disasters. As a form of retaliation, he also used earthquakes to punish and terrorize the populace. In Japanese folklore, an enormous catfish named Namazu is responsible for earthquakes. The god Kushima, who guards Namazu and uses a stone to restrain the fish, lives in the mud beneath the earth's surface. When Kushima lets his guard down, Namazu thrashes about and starts to shake violently. The way that modern earthquakes are portrayed in film reflects human psychological responses to the potential trauma that can be inflicted on families who are directly affected and their loved ones varies. Research on disaster mental health response emphasizes the importance of understanding the various roles played by the loss of family and important community members, the loss of one's home and familiar surroundings, and the loss of necessities such as supplies and services for sustaining survival. Thank you for your support.